The opening phrase of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony leads to an aggressive half cadence that punctuates the end of the main theme. This cadence is adorned with a chromatic inflection, F sharp, that leads strongly into the five chord that follows. Because of the interval of an augmented sixth that obtains between the bass, A flat, and the raised fourth scale degree, F sharp, the resulting sonority is referred to as an augmented sixth chord. If we recompose Beethoven's theme diatonically, we see that the augmented sixth chord can be understood as a chromatic inflection of a predominant, in this case, 4-6. Thus, in diatonic contexts, augmented sixth chords are often used to create a harmonic accent. It's worth noting that Beethoven has good reason to draw our attention to this cadence. When it returns in the recapitulation, the music takes an unexpected turn with the famous oboe solo. Whereas Beethoven's augmented sixth chord contains just three different notes, composers often add an additional note to create a variant on the same fundamental structure. Generally speaking, augmented sixth chords come in three related varieties each of which contains scale degrees flat 6, sharp 4, and 1. The Italian 6-3 contains exactly these notes with a doubled tonic. The French 4-3 contains these notes plus scale degree 2. And the German 6-5 contains these notes plus scale degree 3. Both flat 6 and sharp 4 have a strong tendency to resolve to scale degree 5. Flat 6 moves down by step, and sharp 4 moves up by step, resolving together to an octave. The other scale degrees move parsimoniously to the ensuing 5 chords remaining notes. Moving directly to 5 from the German 6th creates parallel 5ths. To avoid this voice leading issue, composers often insert an intervening cadential 6-4. Sometimes, however, composers opt to retain the distinctive sound produced by the parallel fifths. When approaching augmented sixth chords, performers should be attentive to their various gravitational forces, which composers can play with to create a spectrum of tension and release. Examine the treatment of dissonance in this example from Beethoven's Piano Trio in C minor. A German sixth enters in measure 7, but doesn't resolve fully until the downbeat of measure 10, Whereas measures 7 and 8 contain a composing out of the German 6th chord proper, only flat 6 resolves as expected to G in measure 9. The remaining unresolved voices keep the tension alive and leave room for a brief violin solo that leads to a complete resolution of all remaining voices on the downbeat of measure 10. Note also how the C of the German 6th is transformed from a consonance above A flat in measure 8 into a dissonance above G in measure 9 where it becomes a 4-3 suspension above G. This ebb and flow of tension creates considerable musical interest. Another common technique treats the German 6th as a harmonic chameleon of sorts, because it sounds like a dominant 7th chord in isolation. But we'll save that discussion for a future lesson on chromatic modulation. <laughs> 